Welcome to the Inner Athlete Podcast, where we discuss all things youth athlete development and youth mentoring. The one thing that we've noticed more so, especially with what's happened over the last couple of years, everyone knows what's happened, um, is kind of like the lack of loading that the, a lot of um, kids and teens have actually haven't had as they normally would. So whether it's normal sport or whether it's um, just playing in the parks or anything like that, normal running, track and field, sporting events, they've kind of really lacked that loading. And then what mm. we've actually seen is is more of a nut, like, yes, injuries weren't happening because no one was, was participating in anything. But then as things start yes. to get back in, we didn't see like this appropriate load and progression getting back into training. It was kind of like almost like this ramp up, a, a massive ramp up um, in training loads. Mm. And as a result, we've just kind of seen like a skyrocketing, well, not, I wouldn't say skyrocketing, but more than what we would see normally in terms of more mm. um, um, soft tissue related injuries. And these are non Non traumatic. Right. So, traumatic would be, you know, you suffering a knock from someone else or something like that. These are just from just like generally running or yeah. just playing sport or falling, whatever it may be. So, yeah. we're really seeing a bit of an upswing in those areas. And where strength training kind of comes into for those areas specifically is it helps to enhance or yeah. improve the durability of the individual um, to prevent these issues from being an issue in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are so many benefits for strength training from everyone from, you know, 13 year olds to 90 year olds, but yeah. And, and I think I hadn't really thought about that too much, but yeah, like through COVID where kids were moving less and climbing less and lifting less and playing sport less and getting access to people like you less. And you know, that there, there was a real, you know, physical mental and emotional cost to that time and um you know there's this i have this bee in my bonnet about you know like it's with kids it's tough i think because of course we want to protect them we want to keep them safe um we don't want to put them in harm's way but also we want them to be able to get strong mentally emotionally and physically you know, we, and, and literally how do you get strong in a gym or you work against resistance, which is why it's called resistance training or progressive resistance overload or whatever you want to call it. Right. And so the byproduct is we go in, we do something hard, we work against physical resistance and there's an adaptive process, uh, as a consequence, right? So to, uh, mentally and emotionally, when we go and do something that's a bit scary or a bit hard or a bit uncomfortable, there's an adaptive response to that. You know, the thing that scared me, I went and I did it. I, I made a phone call to that person or I had a conversation or I, you know, did that thing and I die. I survived. I actually did a the thing that scared me doesn't scare me as much. And then two or three times down the track, now it doesn't scare me at all. And so, you know, the challenge is like, we want to look after kids and protect, them, but also we want to, to a, point i believe anyway let them fall over let them scrape their knees let them come last let you know life is not always about winning life is not always about having a pain-free existence like the reality and the messiness of life you know beyond childhood there are times when life sucks there are times when you come last there are times when you fall over there are times when things are not fair the practical i wish it wasn't that but that is the practical messiness of life so I think putting kids in a controlled environment that sometimes is tough, I don't mean ridiculous, but I just mean controlled, where they've got to do some hard stuff is it can actually, done the right way, you know, with the right coach, it actually can be not just physically transformative, but emotionally and psychologically as well. Yeah, because we're basically with resistance training, all you're doing is providing something a little bit harder than they would normally do. And then do they yeah. achieve it? Do they not? If they do achieve it, great. We progressively overload. It's a pretty simple idea. Yeah. But then the beauty part, because what I like to do sometimes is look back at old programs. So we track all the programs here. And it's like, all right, this is where you were when you first started. Remember that you, your cranky knee, shoddy ankle, and your lower back was playing up, right? Yeah. Look where you are. Yeah, look yeah. what your program is showing now. Look how far you've progressed. And 
what are the results that you're getting? And it's like, okay. Then they kind of start to yeah. see the actual benefit of doing the resistance training side um, to help with that performance and overcome injuries or whatever it may be. But then also you kind of see like a secondary thing. And we've seen this more so with our kids now. The grades have started to stabilize. We see less fluctuations. It's almost like the borderline gradually improves. Wow. Yeah. And um, their eating is better. That's, that's amazing. Their sleeping is better. Their relationships with their families are a lot better as well. And as as a and the parents are so happy. They're just like, this is great. My son or daughter is actually learning to develop, uh, developing themselves into like a a small adult essentially. Mm. Um, and and the parents mm. are happy. They're pumped, and and the parents can and especially the one thing I have found is that kind of 12 to 14 year old age is when kids start to kind of push away against their parents, more like that rebellion age. And then as they get older and older, yeah. maybe it's late teens to early to mid twenties, they kind of like almost like reform back with their parents to some degree. And mm. when they, mm. between that, that 14 year old age onwards, it's like they're looking for someone to help guide them through. Mm. So whether it's a, a mentor or a coach or something like that, they're finding the right, get them on the right path but they're also working with someone who's maybe five or ten years older their parents are usually what 20 25 years older these days so finding someone who's kind of gone through what they've done somewhat recently um and then then at least they're going to be able to move forward or they see someone that they actually want to follow so it's kind of like that big brother big Mm. sister mentality yeah. I think also the the other great kind of side benefit is that when you train kids and they hit milestones, you know, and they get stronger or they jump higher or they run faster or they get better scores or they do better testing or whatever it is, you know, they build confidence and self-esteem. And then they then they start to get a little bit competitive, which is as long as it's in a good way, in a healthy way, competition's great. Competition is where excellence comes from. It's where growth happens. It's where skill develops. It's where it's where confidence happens. You know, um, so that it's it's amazing the people over the years that I trained that on day one nothing really meant anything because it was all new. It was like a new landscape, and so they didn't understand what any or numbers or measures meant. Then then once they got an understanding of what a whatever, you know, what a nine was on a beep test or a whatever, a sub VO2 max test command. And say so kind of go, oh, this is my baseline. This is my day one kind of data. And then we do day 28 or whatever it is. And then they can see growth and change. Then all of a sudden, these things that meant nothing become very meaningful and, and a great source of inspiration and motivation and also confidence, you know, so... Yeah, I think that the gym is a really nice uh, place and and training is a really nice place for kids to like develop as people as well because you're solving problems, you're doing hard things, you're 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 understanding your body, you know, you're you're communicating and you're part of something bigger than I think it's great. Yeah, and I, w- I wish everyone would get into the gym to some degree. It doesn't have to be you know, four, five, six times a week, even, you know, starting out, you know, once yeah. or twice a week and just and just maintaining that. And then you'll start to see the benefits uh, later on down the track. Um, but I, I want to kind of like wrap this, wrap this podcast I, I know, up. I know, oh, this, I know this is your show, but can I, I know this is your show, but can I ask you a question? Shoot. Yeah. Tell me about, um, because I haven't seen your center, which is very lazy of me and very irris. But tell me about, like, who's your typical client? I'm sure it varies broadly, but who are who's the who are most of your clients or members, and what's the majority of the type of work that you do with them? All right, so I say sixty percent of our members are below the age of eighteen. Our youngest member is eleven years old. He comes in at six in the morning with his old man, which is really cool to see. Wow. Um. Unfortunately, he's going through uh, just like a lower limb development injury, just uh, severs. For those who don't know, it's basically just an Achilles issue. Um, mm. 
We work everywhere from kids that are on NDIS, so they might be on the spectrum. And then we've got all the way yep. to, um, I guess, junior elite. So we've got um, a couple of girls that be pushing for the Olympics uh, for next year, other Olympics or the Paris Games. And and then we work with everyone else in between that play club level, just want to get fit and healthy, nothing in particular, maybe for school sport. Yeah. Then we work with um, a lot of junior elite that have aspirations to go on either to the national level or even you know, go to college or something like that. Um, that's probably our main demographic. In terms of sports, You know, primarily uh, swimming and soccer, there seems to be the two main focuses. Um, in yeah. terms, we kind of fell into swimming just inadvertently i don't um just i think one yeah. parent saw us and she came in and we just got a whole bunch of swimmers very quickly so it was really cool to see and, and basically what we do is we look after the person first then the swimming swimmer second so usually most people that come to us especially the junior athletes have has, had some sort of like um some sort of injury one or two they've gone to multiple people physios or an- another personal trainer or coach they've just never seemed to be able to get on top of it um our system's a little bit different in terms of how we uh, go about things um it seems to be the right recipe for those who tend to fall through the cracks or don't have a system around them that has actually worked for them um in the past um we you know we train in a small environment we have up to eight people training at once two coaches on the floor at any one time individualized programs and the beauty part is you know, because it's eight people training at once, you know, you get to see the same people again and again. You know, it creates a little community base. You know, we have kids, our swimmers from over five different clubs and they all know each other, all communicate with one another. A lot of kids go to the same school. They may not necessarily be like tight friends or anything like that, but you know, they'll still have a yak with each other as well. Um, and we just kind of like foster the environment where the kids that come here are able to really work on themselves and that's probably the one thing i've seen the most is once they work on themselves they're able to better interact with the environment um, around them so whether it's with their parents Mm -hmm. with their teachers with their friends the school whoever may be whatever may be Um, and we've seen that going that next level of uh, it's confidence and competence that comes from that as well so when someone feels more confident and confident in themselves they're going to be able to better interact with the environment around them in a positive light yeah, great. And and also, as we were saying before, I mean, now you've got kids meeting strangers and having conversations with people out of their social group, but at the same time creating a new social group and creating and, and kind of that social muscle, especially for teenagers these days, social muscle away from, you know, the phone or the uh you know that what do you call them devices you know it's like real conversation face to face with humans it's like that's not a bad thing these days either no but the one thing i have seen is a lot of we get a, a few old adults coming in as well a few parents they'll come in with their kids as well they'll train at the same time they'll yeah. run the different programs and they'll see that the kids will see their parents train and then the parents will see the kids train. So they're kind of like amongst it, but still working on themselves at the same time. But then we also yeah. get other parents connecting with one another. We also get some of the younger kids talking to different other parents as well, because everyone's kind of like somewhat invested in, in, in each other. Yeah. Um, and it really creates that kind of like that community base um, that we have here that everyone, you know, just wants to get to know each other. Everyone's doing their own thing. Everyone's competitive against themselves. And they, I think it's probably the the other thing as well. No one's really competitive against anyone else. That's when their sport is, is when they're competitive against someone else. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect, mate. Sounds like you've created a great environment for people to be in and develop in. So good for you. Good for you. Us, uh, us two fat kids, we did all right. Yeah. Yeah, precisely. Yeah, we did. We did okay. All right. Cool. What else do you want to ask me, if anything? Um, I think I'll probably wrap it up with this question, right? Should, should we bring back um gym classes as part of the school curriculum? Because I know you, mm. I know you probably have your thoughts around it. I've got my thoughts. We know what the current climate is. Where where the VC rate seems to you know tiptoe in the wrong direction, and you know physical activity is you know somewhat on the decline, and some areas on the incline. 
um mm. i guess what are your what's your perspective on that question i mean i whether or not we should i, I don't know if there's an arbitrary answer and if i say no people are going to be pissed off if i say yes the same thing right but i i think look i would love to see kids um being given the opportunity um i don't know that in 2023 some some parents are going to be enamored with the idea of their children being forced to exercise if they don't want probably not going to fly but i would definitely love to see you know more kids being more active and whether or not it's you know super structured training or whether or not activity where they're running jumping and laughing and you know socializing but definitely i would love to see more options in schools for you know activity based fitness based health based movement based sessions and and as you said some schools are great at that and maybe some schools probably need to do a little bit of work yeah no i agree i think we should get to the point where i know private schools that do a lot of um investment in the strength and conditioning especially at the junior ages as well because i guess yeah you know, the private schools they're investing a lot more into their sporting programs um the state schools to some degree they are more so with the athletic population but even then you're going to still miss a chunk of that as well where kids that aren't sporty want to get in the gym as well yeah that they want to be physically yeah. fit they want to yeah. have some sort of neck pain they got to do some rehab work from the physio whatever it may be I think we just need a, a mm. space or a space and time in order to facilitate something like that where the kids can come in, you know, once a week, twice a week, utilize the gym, have someone take them through a structured program. It could be a program where, you know, some of the young boys, you know, they just want to get get jacked or whatever it may be, maybe facilitating a program at that level. Um, mm. Some of the girls maybe want to, I don't know, just – feel feel long and lean or something like so it's more of a mobility some strength training focusing on mm. full range of motion and we facilitate that at their ability as well so there's i guess there's ways that it can potentially work um but i definitely think there needs to be something in each school uh, moving forward because mm. if if anything it's going to be a longer term investment as i mentioned before we've seen kids mm. improving grades improving concentration mm. in class especially with boys you know getting them to sit mm. down for 45 minutes at a time you know yeah for me it was a struggle at best um then to better eating habits because if they're getting stronger and again like again starting at buff it's like what else can i do it's like, all right maybe yeah. looking at eating you know, improving your diet then that can be a better conversation so then they can start to lead their own health and fitness journey rather than the school trying to push it and force upon it. Mm. So then it becomes a lot easier to um, continue to implement. Yeah, we definitely need the buy-in from the end user, whether that's kids or grown-ups. We need the people to buy in. We can't coax people for the next 50 years towards health and fitness. So, well, mate, it's been fun to chat and it's to see you. I might have to see you in the three-dimensional version at some stage. Yes, in the physical form. Cool. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule. I know you got a lot going on, as you mentioned before. Um, for those who um for those who've been listening to us, please like, share, subscribe, do all those wonderful things. Um, even comment as well. Um, as I mentioned before, Craig's been a has been a past mentor, still continues to be some somewhat of a mentor, still listen to you to the good word that you're pushing out. Um and I know that whatever you're doing, you know, will continue to grow and develop and a lot of people will start to, you know, buy in and start to take more responsibility for themselves moving forward. Wow. Well, thanks, mate. I appreciate that. You're a good man doing good things. And uh, yeah, thanks for having the chat with me. I appreciate it. And um, to everyone out there, go do some work, open that door, explore that potential, what's there. It's pretty bloody exciting. That's it. Cool. All right. See you on the next one. You have just listened to the Inner Athlete Podcast. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with the release of weekly episodes. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to get great tips on all things youth athlete development and youth mentoring.